Disruption. Disruption is everywhere. I took this photo at Berard and um, Robson. You probably recognize it, the HMV logo, kind of faint in the top corner there. But I love this, the little iPod icon. It wasn't even lit up. There was nothing else in the store. But that's what brought HMV down. If it can be digitized, it can be disrupted. Newspapers. I love newspapers. I worked in the newspaper industry for many years. I don't think newspapers are going to go away anytime soon, but their format is changing. The model that they're based on is kind of broken in terms of relying on advertising exclusively to fund them. We will shift into print, digitization, and it will become much more fragmented. I love this quote. Revenue from circulation exceeded revenue from advertising for the first time ever. New York Times. 2013. They have shifted their model. They've put a lot of things behind paywalls. They can because of the New York Times. But they've recognized that there's a major shift afloat here. So my question to you is, how are you responding to disruption? I'm going to tell you a story about Tesco. Tesco is a grocery store in South Korea. They were solidly second in their category. Rather than opening up a new store, they opened up a virtual store. They decided to disrupt the category. They took photos of groceries and they displayed it on the side of a subway train station, capturing people for the 10 minutes in between trains. You could shop with your phone. You could scan the QR code. You could buy it and it would be shipped and delivered to your house that evening. Pretty cool, eh? Okay. They disrupted their industry. They changed, they challenged the, dis uh, the distribution the pricing, and the promotional model. This went crazy in terms of free media coverage. Another company that took advantage of disruption, Olson Hotels in Melbourne. Anyone ever been there? Melbourne? Take Melbourne first, then a Molson Hotel? Okay. Molson Hotel, or Olson Hotel, that was a bit of a slip of, uh, of a, <laughs> we have a different beer sponsor, yes. <laughs> Wine sponsor. Um, Olson Hotel in Melbourne, decided to challenge convention in their industry about the checkout policy. So you know how you check out at 11, you check in at 3, in between they're cleaning your room. Okay. They decided to say, well, if there's no one coming to your room, why do you have to check out? We'll let you stay. So at the Olsen Hotel, you call down in the morning. Is there anyone coming in? Nope. Okay, great. You can stay. Free. For a day. No one comes in another day, you can stay another day. They call it the overstay. <laughs> They've got a great thing on their website that shows the animation of this poor guy getting, you know, uh, he's really relaxing by the end of his stay. The reality is, is that the Olsen is a popular hotel. Nobody's going to abuse this thing terribly. Most people, <laughs> terribly, yes, except this guy. <laughs> Most people don't have the, you know, the leisure to have more than one day free. But they give them a free day and they leverage it. On, they have the Facebook page. They ask you, what do you do with your free day in Melbourne? They get people talking about it. The amount of publicity they get from this more than pays for the free rooms that they give away. They weren't being used anyway. They disrupted their industry. Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club challenged the men's shaving category. They sell razors for a dollar. You can get the more expensive version. I think it's like nine bucks. There we go. For a dollar, by mail. You order it online. It comes shipped to you doesn't sound that revolutionary, except that they have achieved $20 million of sales last year. They're projected to achieve $60 million next year because they're going to start selling men's grooming products. But it's the irreverent approach that they have, and I'm going to play a video for you. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up. Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. 
And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. These guys have disrupted their category. They have changed the pricing model. They've changed the distribution, or the place and they've changed the promotional model. Phenomenally, phenomenally successful. Shifting things away from Chic, Gillette, the guys that hold that category. So disruption, if you can get ahead of it, is great. If you're simply caught responding to it, that's where it can be difficult. So my challenge to you is, what are you doing to disrupt your industry? Thinking differently, altering one of these characteristics. And finally, if it can be digitized, it can be disrupted. Absolutely.